So Jerry Nadler now leveling threats and placing a timeline on Robert Mueller, the man he and the Democrats thought would bring President Trump down, saying a subpoena is coming before the end of the summer. Joining me now, Saul Weisenberg, former deputy independent counsel and a Fox News contributor, along with Alan Dershowitz, Harvard Law professor emeritus and author of the introduction to the published version of the Mueller report. Alan, uh, Democrats are really pushing for Mueller's testimony. But isn't it possible that the GOP's case could actually be strengthened by his appearance? It's possible, but there's no legal right to Mueller's testimony. There's no legal right to any of the Mueller report. Indeed, even though I wrote the introduction to the Mueller report, the Mueller report never should have been written. Uh, there's no room under our Constitution for special counsel, special prosecutors, reports. Prosecutors have the right to say only one thing. We have concluded that there is no evidence sufficient to charge the president with Russian collusion or obstruction of justice, period. I'm taking no questions. I'm making no public report. I'm giving my findings to the attorney general. No prosecutor should ever go beyond that. We all agreed with that when Comey went beyond that with Hillary Clinton. I don't understand the difference between the criticism of Comey for saying that Hillary Clinton engaged in extreme carelessness. Everybody criticized that. And then we want to know why Mueller didn't charge the president. It's the same thing. The whole enterprise of special counsel, special prosecutors, is inconsistent with the Constitution. I hope we've seen the last of it. Now, Saul, you were watching John Dean's show yesterday where he was uh, testifying on the Hill and purporting to draw a connection between the Watergate roadmap mm -hmm. to impeachment and what Mueller's report represents. Your thoughts? First of all, they're completely different, those two roadmaps. Jaworski and the grand jury were very careful not to make any arguments whatsoever, not to draw any conclusions. They just said, here is, uh, on, on March 17th, 1973, President Nixon had a conversation with these two people. Then they listed the tape recordings and the grand jury testimony that the House could go look at. Totally different than the Mueller report, which, which made uh, a number of legal and factual conclusions. That's number one. But number two, more importantly, uh, for the people who still believe that firing James Comey could ever be criminal obstruction of justice, mm -hmm. The, the Watergate roadmap, which was all about obstruction of justice, right, that's what the grand jury indicted people for, never in any way right. mentions right. the firing of Archie Cox Absolutely as an right. obstruction of justice. And I've looked at just about every book on Watergate. I don't believe Jaworski's people ever even thought about uh, now, indicting anyone the, under an obstruction the, theory for firing Cox. There is a precedent that's much closer, and of course, nobody talked about it yesterday, and that's George H.W. Bush pardoning Casper Weinberger, pardoning the five people on the eve of their trial. The special prosecutor in that case, Lawrence Walt, said that was designed to stop the investigation, and it did stop the investigation. Nobody ever suggested obstruction of justice against President Bush. All right, That's the relevant precedent. Day. All right, let's get back to current day. Uh, Sheila Jackson Lee was speaking today, guys, on the civil uh, contempt citations that are being floated around for Barr, et cetera. Let's watch. We will see what we'll do next. If the compliance continues, uh, then we'll take uh, the next action off the table. Uh, but uh, everything still remains on the table. Uh, until we know that they have fully complied uh, with the information that we need. Alan, is there anything, any there there? No, I mean, there's no there there. It's this cat-mouse game with the White House <clears throat> Counsel's Office. There's no there there. There is no legal obligation to provide the public or Congress with any of the information, certainly not information that is protected by grand jury secrecy, that involves ongoing investigations. It violates the separation of powers for Congress to try to compel disclosure of information that the executive branch has the right to maintain secrecy over, not forever, but while there are pending investigations and until a judge clears the grand jury. What they're actually asking Barr to do is violate the law, and no court is going to compel an attorney general to violate the law. Yeah, but, yeah Barr, I should have re re referred to DOJ, not White House counsel. I was referencing McGahn, trying to get him to testify. But that's the case, is it not, Saul? Again, this idea that no compliance has taken place when 
it seems like they've gone overboard. And I, I would argue they gave up too much information in the executive branch during this process. So I'll close it out. Well, uh, not only that, but, uh, uh, you know, just think of the case of David Se Seamus, worked for President Obama. He took the exact same position. He would not allow him to even come to Congress. It's a position mm -hmm. being taken by every president, Democratic and Republican, right. for the last five administrations. All right, guys, thanks so much.